It took them multiple years to realize, but these Chicago Bulls have finally leaned into a rebuild. While I can understand not wanting to give up on a core that was once number one in the Eastern Conference for some time, I think we all know it was time. Three of the five main pieces of that one-time number one seed team still remain, but this Bulls team is clearly headed in a different direction. While the Bulls did stand by and watch their most valuable assets depreciate, there is still reason to be hopeful for the future in Chicago. Today I'll be discussing this Bulls roster, the moves they made, some moves they may make, and why the Bulls leaned into a rebuild just in time. Let's start with the obvious cloud currently hanging over the Bulls, the Zach Levine situation. The Bulls could have easily gotten a haul back for Levine had they traded him before his contract expired, but they didn't and now find themselves in a situation where his market is more or less non-existent. Zach's recent injuries combined with his large contract have created this situation, but I don't believe all hope should be lost. While getting the haul you could have years back is completely out of the picture, I do think a scenario where Zach comes back and gets his value back to a point where you don't have to attach assets to get off the contract isn't impossible. At age 29, he should theoretically be in his prime, and I believe he could come back after a long hiatus and remind the league of his dynamic talent. While he is flawed, Zach is still a dynamic offensive talent and high volume three point weapon. There are still mouths to feed on this Bulls roster, but with the removal of DeMar DeRozan, I believe this could be an ideal situation for Zach to put up the numbers we became accustomed to prior to last season. Another aspect of this is that during the off season, Zach was a three year commitment, while during the season, it won't be viewed as as much of a problematic contract. I wouldn't get my hopes up too much, but I think the Bulls will eventually be able to get off Zach and fully move forward with the rebuild while not having to sacrifice future draft assets. Lonzo Ball's injury situation is vastly different than Zach's, but I also believe him becoming an asset isn't completely out of the question. Who knows what he'll look like after so much time away and with a new knee, but should he return well, he will likely be sought after across the league with his skill set and opportunity for a bargain contract this offseason. Zach and Lonzo could become tradable again, but one person who I don't believe will is Nikola Vucevic. As he has become public enemy number one for Bulls fans, I'm sure this isn't too hard to believe, but it is something I have to mention. Could maybe a team like the Pelicans potentially show interest should he play decently? Maybe, but regardless, I wouldn't be expecting really anything in return. Now that we've discussed the Bulls past, let's discuss what this video is really about, the Bulls future. The Bulls have a few really solid young pieces, led by Kobe White, and definitely have a decent base for a rebuild. While I don't know if the franchise cornerstone is there quite yet, that's primarily what the rebuild is for, and it couldn't have been started at a better time. The upcoming draft is believed to be one of the best in years with a ton of top tier talent. While Cooper Flag is obviously the prize, there are also quite a few other prospects who could potentially completely change the fortunes of a franchise. I'll talk more about the 2025 draft class later, but for now let's discuss what the Bulls actually have. The Bulls best young piece currently is Kobe White, and after being stagnant for a few years after being the 7th overall pick in 2019, Kobe had a breakout season last year. White averaged 19-5-5 and on decent efficiency and was a candidate for the most improved player award. White also showed ability as a volume 3 point shooter, shooting 37.6% on exactly 7 attempts a night last season. While again, Kobe is not going to save the franchise, he is an excellent piece alongside pretty much any star mold. He is also on an excellent contract at 12 and just below 13 annually for each of the next two seasons. Should the Bulls get their supposed franchise cornerstone in the upcoming draft, you will have an opportunity next season to swing a big move before you have to pay Kobe again. Expect more improvement from Kobe next season. The biggest contract the Bulls gave out this offseason was to Patrick Williams. While the former number 4 overall pick hasn't quite become a star, he is a high level role player and I like this deal for both Pat and the Bulls. Williams is a hair off being a 40% 3 point shooter at 39.9% and an excellent defender, not to mention that despite having played 4 years, he is still only 22 years old. While it is not a descending contract, which would have been perfect for the Bulls situation, it is evenly spread out meaning the further you get into the contract, the less amount of the cap it will consume. Pat isn't a perfect player, but he fits a mold that pretty much every team in the league would like to have. With the loss of Alex Caruso, guys like Pat and the next guy I'm going to discuss are crucial to building a team that is not only talented, but well-connected. Ayo Donsumu is another great complementary piece on the Bulls roster. After shooting nearly 38% from deep in his rookie season, he fell to just above 31% in his sophomore campaign, but followed that up with a year shooting over 40% from deep on significantly higher volume than his first two years. This past season, he averaged 13-3-3 while being a great defender. Expect Ayo to step up in the absence of Alex Caruso. His deal and Kobe White's contract give the Bulls the opportunity to swing a big move next offseason before they have to pay each of them again, 
should they be able to move off Zach Levine at some point? Should they not, Zach's contract could possibly be used to match the salary of said star while attaching other assets. Now that we've gone through the main names we've become used to in Chicago, let's discuss the new, young additions made this offseason. The first move, which came as a shock to many, was acquiring Josh Giddy for Alex Caruso straight up. While this is another situation where the Bulls definitely could have gotten more value had they not sat on their hands, I've started to think it wasn't as crazy as I and many believed it to be when the trade went down. It is very understandable if you would rather not have Giddy, but I can somewhat see where the Bulls front office was coming from. The season prior to last, Josh averaged 17, 8, and 6, and many of his issues with OKC this season were rooted in being forced to play off the ball. He is still only 21 years old and showed shooting improvement post All-Star break last season with the help of renowned shooting coach Chip Anglin. However, a big reason for my questioning of at least some level of pick compensation not being included is the fact that Giddy is on an expiring contract. While him leaving won't be a concern with having his restricted free agent rights, a potentially large deal this offseason could be. While this does put him in a position to play for and earn a contract, there is definitely still a world where that backfires even if Giddy does show improvement. Should Giddy return to 17, 8, and 6 or better, I can easily see him and his representation pointing to Emmanuel Quickly's 5-year $175 million deal as a reference for Giddy's value. Combine this with the fact that the Bulls will have to spend money should Zach Levine be moved, and you could potentially be in a sticky situation. The bright side is that should you land your believed franchise cornerstone in the upcoming draft, he will be on a rookie deal for the following four seasons, but even if that is how it plays out, a Giddy contract would hurt your future flexibility. There's definitely a world where Giddy both plays for a contract and proceeds to play up to it, but the Bulls must weigh their options, especially if they land a ball-dominant guard as their top-tier prospect in 2025. Despite all this, even in the worst-case scenario where you pay Giddy a significant amount and he stagnates, you can just add his contract to your likely top-tier prospect's rookie deal and divide by two to justify it. The whole Giddy situation is very complex, but the Bulls front office should be able to get a decent idea of what the best path forward is following a season where he will have the ball in his hands a lot. While much of the hope for this Bulls rebuild is predicated on the upcoming draft, they also made out pretty well in the recent draft. Matas Buzelis was mocked as a top 5 pick a decent amount, and the Bulls managed to snag the hometown kid at the 11th pick. While there are reasons for his slide, I like the upside swing by the Bulls in what is believed to be a weak draft. Buzelis is definitely raw, but has great indicators, mainly his size and build. He is a 6'10 wing with a lot of energy, and despite his flaws was an excellent value pick at 11 in again, what is believed to be a weaker draft class. Despite his relatively abysmal efficiency in Summer League, he definitely showed some promise. Should he pan out, Buzelis will be an electrifying talent, and I think he was far and away the best option for the Bulls at their 11th pick. The final move to discuss from this Bulls offseason is a smaller one, but it could have some impact. The Bulls signed Indiana Pacers big man Jalen Smith to a three-year $27 million deal following a hyper-efficient season in Indiana's high-powered offense. While Smith is flawed and the Pacers system could have exacerbated his offensive talent, I still like this move as yet another potential upside swing for the young Bulls. Smith shot over 42% from deep last season and will at the very least be an elite floor spacing big man, which is definitely valuable in the modern NBA. I don't know how much improvement we could realistically see, but Smith is still only 24 years old and this contract is basically risk-free for the Bulls in their current situation. While this Bulls roster has some good young pieces and a few pieces with potential, as I said, the purpose of finally going rebuild was to get the one who could really take you to the promised land, and the Bulls are aiming to do that in the upcoming draft. Cooper Flag is the dream, obviously, but part of the reason I think the Bulls finally pulled the plug was the fact that it isn't necessarily flag or bust. Ace Bailey, Ron Harper Jr., VJ Edgecombe, and Nolan Traor are all believed to be cream of the crop prospects. It isn't often that there are five potentially franchise-changing prospects in a draft, so the Bulls picked the perfect time to put themselves in position to acquire one of them. A lot of question marks remain with the Chicago Bulls, but the one that no longer does is what the goal is. To me, the most frustrating place to be as a fan is in a situation with no real end goal, just waiting around and middling because you're too scared to put out a very bad product for a few years. The beauty of the Bulls situation though is that this could be a very quick rebuild should things go swimmingly. The Bulls could very easily attract a star to their major market as soon as next offseason to expedite the path to real contention. I could sit here all day discussing the potential paths forward in Chicago, but basically as long as the Bulls bottom out this season and acquire a top prospect, they should have a very bright future ahead. That's going to wrap this one up. If you enjoyed it, please like it up, sub the channel, hit that noti bell. It would help me out a ton. We are on the road to 5K. Comment down below, you know, what are your thoughts on this Bulls offseason? Are you happy that they finally gave up? You know what I mean? Because, man, it was just like, again, I, I get it, right? Like, you know, they were a number one seed. They were a really good team. But Lonzo has, you know, his 
plethora of issues. You know, even when they were that good, you kind of knew it wasn't going to end in a championship. You know what I mean? So I think they should have done this years ago. But again, I am very pro pull the plug when it's clearly not going to work. I understand actual NBA business is different than that. You know, mediocr- again, mediocrity doesn't pay like it does in the NFL, but major market, you're kind of scared to put out a really, really bad product. And I get that. But, you know, the Bulls finally, finally gave up. And I, I think I think it'll work out. I'm not going to lie. But yeah, once again, let's go wrap this one up. If y'all could like the video, sub the channel would help me out a ton, a ton. And I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.